You can get the cards you need for today's Budget Magic deck and support the show from this episode's sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just follow the link in the description box down below. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading to M19 Standard to play a deck that is playing some super sweet M19 cards, and that is Boggle Horse Green. So you might remember this from our instant deck tags, although I kind of rebuilt the deck to my liking. So it's similar to the instant deck tag deck, however, it has some sweet changes, which I think make the deck even better. As you can see, 84 bucks in the paper world, 41 ticks on Magic Online, so a pretty sweet prize for a surprisingly powerful and really cool deck. A quick reminder before we break down Boggle Horse Green for Standard. If you enjoy this deck, and you enjoy Budget Magic in general, it would be amazing of you. If you take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Boggle Horse Green for Sanders, starting with the Boggle Horse. And the Boggle Horse, of course, of course, is Vine Mare. So Vine Mare is a boggle because it's hexproof. So for four mana, you get a 5-3 with hexproof. Can be blocked by black creatures, which can be relevant if you run into like zombies or a random mono black control deck. The big deal though is the hexproof. You're getting a good body and you're getting hexproof. And when we combine that with some other hexproof and pseudo hexproof creatures like Carnage Tyrant and Bristling Hydra, we have a bunch of really resilient threats. So Carnage Tyrant, of course, only a two of them the top end of our curve, but along with Hexproof also gets Trample and just a massive body is a 7-6, plus it can be countered so it's good against control. Bristling Hydra isn't really Hexproof, but it can gain Hexproof one time using its energy. We're not an energy deck, we don't have ways to repeatedly put counters on it like some of the old energy decks, but it does give us a one-shot way of fizzling a removal spell. So the idea of this deck is we are going to ramp into our Hexproof creatures and then load them up with Blanchwood Armor. So Blanchwood Armor is very powerful in a mono green deck with all forests. And that's our deck. We have 24 forests in our mana base. So every land drop we make is making Blanchwood Armor better. So if we can let play a Vine Mare on turn four, play a Blanchwood Armor on turn five, we're going to end up with a nine power Hexproof Attacker, which is a pretty big deal. And then it keeps scaling throughout the game. As we make more land drops, we're getting a bigger and bigger creature. So once we get our Blanchwood Armor on Vine Mare or any one of our Hexproof creatures, really, then the next step is to trample it up. So sometimes we can just win by attacking with Vine Mare, but it's even better if we can make this huge Vine Mare that can't really be killed because it's Hexproof and and trample over our opponent's defenses. So for this, we have one Ronas the Indomitable, three Cartouche of Strength, which is not only a way to give our big Hexproof creature trample, but also a way to kill something. Uh, fighting a creature is pretty safe when you're using a Hexproof creature. You're not getting blown out in two for one by removal and response. So that's kind of the plan of the deck. The sweetest new addition to the deck, though, is key to the city. So this deck has 24 lands, which is kind of a lot. We got a bunch of mana dorks, we got a bunch of lands. So there is some risk that we just flood out. Key to the city helps there. It also just gives us a way to make a creature unblockable until end of turn. So if we can make a huge Vine Mare, even better than trampling over our opponent's stuff, is just making it straight up unblockable, which usually means a one or two shot kill with our Hexproof creature. Plus we get to filter away extra lands, draw extra cards, which is really, really helpful. Key to the city also works really well with our other creatures. Steel Leaf Champion is just big. We can play it on turn two thanks to Lanaware Elves. Gigantosaurus is insane with key to the city because it's a 10-10 for 5. So we often can play this like on turn 3, on turn 4 with our mana dorks and then use key to the city to make it just a two-shot kill. It doesn't have the resilience of some of our other threats. It doesn't have the resilience of some of our other threats because it's not hexproof, but still, it puts our opponent to the test. Like, do you have the Veraska's Contempt? Do you have the Ixalan's Binding? If not, it's just going to win the game super, super quickly. As far as our mana dorks, we start off our curve, Lana War Elves on one, Druid of the Cowl on two. This just helps us get to our Vine Mares, our Gigantosauruses, a little bit faster, and then in the late game, we can always use our key to the city to filter them away when they're, like, relatively bad off the top in the late game. 
Mana base, really simple. 24 forests to pump our Blanchwood armor. In the sideboard, we get some more removal. Prey Upon just gives us a very cheap fight spell. So if we're playing against aggro, comes in to just kill early game creatures. Arborback Stomper comes in over some of our other expensive stuff, like our Carnage Tyrants, if we're playing against a deck like Mono Red, because gaining five life is a really huge swing in those matchups. Then we have for control matchups, Prowling Sepper Pard, just to make all of our stuff uncounterable. So if our opponent's plan is just to sit back and disallow and disallow and Supreme Will, Prowling Sepper Pard puts an end to it. Glyphcrafter's Bestiary gives us a repeatable source of card advantage as we're casting our creatures. Also very good against control decks and slow grinding matchups. And then Naturalize, just as a way to deal with Heart of Kirin's, Paradox Engines, whatever artifacts or enchantments might be ruining our day. And that is the budget magic version of Boggle Horse Green for M19 Standard. And that is our budget magic deck for this week. So I'm pretty excited for this one. We get to play a lot of sweet new cards. Gigantosaurus has grown on me and quickly become one of my favorite cards from the set. It is just so big for such a little amount of mana. Vine Mirror Sweet, Blanchwood Armor, really cool reprint, and I really like how the deck came together, with Key to the City making it even more threatening, giving us that card advantage. So, if you're looking for an interesting take on the Mono Green archetype that can be really annoying for some decks to deal with, I think this is a pretty legitimate budget option, but regardless, I'm going to stop rambling about it. Let's get to the gameplay so you can see how it works. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some Boggle Horse, Boggle Horse Green in standard. And I guess we keep this. I mean, we got ramp, we got big things. We'll see how fast our opponent's draw slash deck is. All right, Shelter Thicket, go. Well, Forest, go. Wouldn't mind drawing something a little bit quicker, especially if this Druid of the Cowl dies. Our hand is slow. Rootbound Craig. And Land of War. Opponent passes. Well, Forest, Druid of the Cowl. Pass the turn. Another Land of War. Oasis. And Drover of the Mighty. Man, opponents ramp, ramp, ramp. Opponent passes. Well, play the Forest. I think we just Steel Leaf Champion. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can potentially Gigantosaurus. Uh, Sarkin's unsealing. Okay. Opponent passes. I'll play a forest. Play Gigantosaurus. Get in with Steel Leaf Champion. And pass the turn. Well, let's see how much damage this Sarkin's unsealing can do. Gigantosaurus should be very hard for it to kill. That's a lot of big creatures to kill a Gigantosaurus. So hopefully this key to the city will just take it down. Also, if they don't kill this druid, we get Carnage Tyrant too. All right, Regisar Alpha kills our Steel Leaf Champion. Sure, makes a dinosaur. Yep, opponent passes. We'll play a forest, Cartouche on Gigantosaurus. Fight Regisar Alpha, play Key to the City, discard Bristling Hydra, and get in for 11. And now our opponent basically has to kill us or at least Key to the City to have any chance. I don't think there's any way they can kill the Gigantosaurus. It's just, it's it's a bit too gigantic. Oh man, it's, Key to the City is, an opponent scoops it up. Key to the City is making this deck. Key to the City is so good. Oh man, it is so sweet with Gigantosaurus. All right, opponent's got a million mana dorks. They're play, basically playing green, red, Sarkin's unsealing. What do we want to change? Do we want to fight the unsealing? I mean, try to fight the creatures, outdraw our opponent with Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Maybe bring in, like, a Naturalize over a Hydra and a Prey Upon over a Hydra. Try it like that. All right. Oh, uh, we got Ramp. We got a Blanchwood Armor, which is seems like one of our best cards in this matchup. Shelter Thicket for our opponent. Well, Forest and Llanowar Elves. Pass the turn. Oasis. And Drover. Ooh. All right. This is good for us. Now we get to play a forest. Play Druid of the Cowl. Fight Drover. Pass the turn. We would like land. A land off the top is our best draw here. Steel Leaf Champion. Well, come on, land off the top. Land off the top. It's a land. All righty. Well, I will see your Steel Leaf Champion and raise you 
a Gigantosaurus. That's a turn three Gigant Turn three, 10, 10 in standard. Gigantosaurus doesn't look that scary, but good God, it is, it is scary. Opponent, Sarkin's unsealing, sure. And passes. Well, you know what? Let's get in with Gigantosaurus. Hit our opponent. Oh my God. We're gonna have another 10-10. Opponent takes it. And uh, how about Gigantosaurus number two? How do you beat that? I mean, if you don't have the right hard removal, how in the world do you beat two Gigantosauruses? Opponent, I mean, what do you, it's like double abyss. They just have to chump block forever. Opponent has Gigantosaurus, okay. Kills some stuff, sure. Opponent passes. We'll play a forest, go attacking. Opponent blocks and blocks. We'll play Bristling Hydra, pass the turn. Yeah, I've come around on Bris uh, on Gigantosaurus. That card is crazy. Regisar Alpha, well, let's hexproof up Bristling Hydra. Opponent gets some dinos for chump blocking. I mean, we just keep playing 10-10s. Blanchwood Armor. Back up to 210 power creatures. Go attacking. Opponent, back to double chumping. And scoops it up! Gigantosaurus is Blanchwood Armor. This deck is awesome. It is so sweet. Whoo, sweet. Oh, man. This deck is fun. It is fun. All right. Budget magic time. We are horsing around in standard. Boggle horse green. And looks like we're playing mono red, so we will see how this goes. We have land of war. We have good blockers. The question's gonna be, on the draw, are we fast enough? I assume this is probably a decent matchup, but we'll see. Land of war elves go. Would love for this land of war to live. That would make us extremely happy. Something like land of war cartouche bomb at courier. So we're actually rooting for like an Earthshaker kind of or something. That would be the best outcome for us on this turn. Because if we can go turn three, Bristling Hydra, turn four, Gigantosaurus, seems like that should be difficult for the red deck to keep up with. Opponent, getting in. Yeah, we'll take it. Down to 18. Heart of Kirin. All right, well, Forest, <laughs> Cartouche our Elves, Kill Bomat Courier. There is still a Heart of Kirin that we're going to have to contend with here. Going to be a race. We have some stuff in the sideboard that will hopefully improve this matchup. Ooh, opponent's passing? Oh, that is that is exactly what we wanted to have happen. Play the Forest. Play Bristling Hydra. Get some... Uh, all right. We've been disintegrated. Well, pass the turn. So we got a plan. Gigantosaurus, key to the city. Please no kill elf. Soulscar Mage. Opponent passing. Well, Forest, if they have another unlicensed disintegration, we're going to cry. Gigantosaurus, please no disintegration. Please. Please. Oh, carries up? Okay. Opponent passing. Well, here comes the fun. So let's think about this. Play a Forest. Play Steel Leaf Champion. Play key to the city. <laughs> Discard our forest. Uh, Tenu? <laughs> ah, key to the city, Gigantosaurus! Uh, that's half of our opponent's life total. And uh, yeah, they gotta answer the key or the Gigantosaurus. Or uh, gotcha. We gotcha. And opponent scoops it up. Ah, that went well. That went well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, against the red deck, I think I think our plan is go down Carnage Tyrants, go up Arborback Stompers, maybe go down one Gigantosaurus. Do we want to fight the vehicles? Uh, let's just Stompy, Stompy, Stompy. Ugh. This hand is slow. Our only creature is Gigantosaurus. I think we mulligan. All right, this is better. At least we got Mana Dorks and Ronas is big. Ooh, we will keep Arbor Backstomper. That's a lot of life gain. Tap land for our opponent who did some mulliganing. Well, Forest and Llanowar Elves. Pass the turn. Live, live Llanowar, live. All right, Llanowar down, sure. Lands? Steel Leaf, well, Druid of the Cowl. 
Hopefully this druid lives where we draw land, or else we might get stuck with a lot of stuff in hand. Opponent passing. Well, play Ronas. Pass the turn. Ronas, I think, is better than Steel Leaf because it's indestructible. We would still love to draw land here. Yeah. I'll play Steel Leaf. No removal? All right. Disintegration. Take down Steel Leaf. Sure. Land. Opponent passing. I'll play the Forest. Play Llanowar Elves. Pass the turn. Arbor Back Stomper feels like pretty big game. Man, opponent's flooding out a smidge. Ooh, Hazarat. Okay. Opponent. Getting in. Sure. Well, this Arbor, El uh, this Arbor Back Stomper is really going to be helpful. Play Arbor Back Stomper. Go up to 20. Get in with Ronas. Unfortunately, we can't really kill this Hazarat. And if Arbor Back dies, then all of a sudden we can't attack with Ronas. Discards a land. Yep. Here comes Hazaret. Or not. I'll play a forest. <laughs> so awkward. What are we doing here? Alright, I mean, I guess we pass? Last card. Discarded. Opponent. Passing. Forest. Does this have to fight? May have. So are we just going to double cartouche? This Arbor Back Stomper so we can attack? This feels so weird. No, thank you. We would not like to fight your Hazaret. Uh, Cartouche? <laughs> ah, just how we drew it up. No, we would not like to fight your Hazaret. We would like to attack with Arbor Back. Oh, no, they drew a removal spell? All right, we get in a bit of damage. Play the forest, pass the turn. Opponent discards a land. Opponent tapping, untapping, passing. Well, play Bristling Hydra. Go attacking. Yeah, we might as well pump. Hit our opponent down to two past the turn. Discard Scrappy. No creatures in the graveyard. And Pong's going to need something very good here. Ah, uh, Chain Whirler's not horrible. But I don't think it saves our opponent. And opponent scoops it up. Well, there was some mulliganing on our opponent's side of the battlefield, but... That feels like a, a decent matchup against one of the best decks in the format, so... Sweet. Alright, budget magic time. We are playing some <laughs> Boggle Horse Green, and starting off with a mulligan, but not a bad mulligan. We have our key to the city, forest to the bottom, land of war elves, hopefully into Steel Leaf Champion. Seems reasonable. Planes for our opponent. And passes. Well, forest and land of war elves. Ship the turn. Opponent. Concealed courtyard. And fatal push. All right. That slows us down a smidge. Opponent passes. I'll play the forest and key to the city. Ship the turn. Opponent planes. And, ooh, militia bugler. All right. Not bad. Although it cannot block steel leaf. Gets a mentor. That is a bit scary. Probably going to have to kill that if we can. Well, Forest, Steel Leaf Champion. Pass the turn. So if our opponent plays Mentor, ideally we can just Cartouche kill it. All right, there's Mentor. Opponent, or do we just race? Maybe we're okay with this? Yeah, let's get in with Steel Leaf. I think actually we're just going to try to ignore these small creatures and beat our opponent down. Play another Steel Leaf. Play a forest, pass the turn. Because if our opponent plays something big enough to block, then we can cartouche it. And if our opponent plays small things to draw cards... All right, Wayward Servant, sure. But it still can't block our our Steel Leafs. Opponent passes. Well, now we'll cartouche, fight Wayward Servant. And opponent scoops it up. Well, that was a pretty straightforward win. That was, that was not bad at all. Um... We might want some Prey Upons. Maybe go down, like, one Carnage Tyrant for a Prey Upon, and one Key to the City for a Prey Upon. Try it like that. Just a, a touch more removal. Ugh. Risky. Risky, risky. We're gonna keep. 
Land of War into Druid of the Cowl into draw land, and we're kind of in really good shape. And we're on the draw. The risk here is our opponent has Fatal Push and we don't draw land, then things could go bad in a hurry. All right, there's a land. So now we're, now we're in pretty good shape. Even if our opponent has Fatal Push, we're in fine shape. And no Fatal Push yet. Opponent, Binding Mummy. This is a interesting zombie deck. Opponent, passing. Yep. We'll play the land, play Druid of the Cowl, pass the turn. We would kind of just like another land. If we draw a land, we can Vine Mare plus Prey Upon something. All right, Fairgrounds Warden, temporarily annoying. Takes our Druid. Yep. Well, come on, land for Vine Mare. Opponent, gonna get in for two. Sure. Land for Vine Mare. Ronas. Well, we'll play Ronas. Ronas turns on Fight City next turn. Assuming our opponent doesn't have another Fairgrounds Warden. Okay, Okedra's Monument, that's okay. Opponent, gonna get in. Get in. Yeah, we take it. Down to 15. Opponent passes. Uh, all right, so how do we wanna do this? We could just Vine Mare. Yeah, let's Vine Mare. Get in with Ronas. Hit our opponent for five. And pass the turn. And now, I mean, eventually we'll find a key to the city and just be able to go to town. All right, Mentor the Meek makes a token. Well, we're probably gonna have to kill Mentor. Opponent passes. Okay, so play the forest. Cartouche. Kill Mentor. Prey upon Fairgrounds Warden. Go to combat. Get in with Ronas. Opponent jumps. Yup. Pass the turn. We couldn't Vine Mare, because then our opponent could trade with Binding Mummy. Ugh. Okay. That's annoying. Dust does kind of get us. Opponent passes. Ooh, key to the city. Well, play Vine Mare. Get in with Ronas. Opponent takes it. Down to 10. Pass the turn. Militia Bugler makes a 1-1. One, one. Opponent. Yep. Finds a Mentor. Passes. Well, can we win? We can't quite win. Let's play Key to the City. Discard a Lana War Elves. Get in. Get in. Opponent blocks. Well, pump Vine Mare. Hit our opponent to three. And our opponent basically needs another Dust Dawn. Or this key to the city is just going to win the game. All right, Dust Dawn. So our opponent... Actually, I think they're still dead. Opponent passes. Gets in. Yep. Well, I guess they're... Are they dead? I guess they're not dead. Down to ten. Oh, yeah, they're dead. They're dead. All right. No draw. So we... Ronas Pump Druid. And a post scoops it up! Whoo! All right. Our tech of adding adding uh, some <laughs> some sweet, sweet key to the city is coming through. Sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are horsing around with uh, some boggle horses in standard. Well, forest, land of war. Ship the turn. $20 card. <laughs> uh, not really. Not really. That's a joke. Island for our opponent. And passes. Well, play a forest. Eh, I mean, we're going for it. Steel Leaf? Who resolves? Well, pass the turn. What is our opponent doing with their mono islands? Oh, they're storming. Okay, well, we will see. Play a forest. Play Lanawar. Play Lanawar. Go attacking. I like that we have three different Lanawars somehow. Dominaria, Eternal Masters, Promo. Hopefully the fourth one is white bordered. I probably should have checked to make sure. Opponent gonna do some scrying. Prophetic Prism. I mean, our opponent basically has two turns to win. Assuming Gigantosaurus resolves. One, two, three, four, five. Mox Amber. Commits our Steel Leaf. We'll play a forest. Play Gigantosaurus. Go attacking. Hit our opponent to 12 and we're still presenting lethal thanks to Gigantosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> it's big, it's big, it's big. Inventor's fair. So opponent needs some sort of interaction. Are we committing? 
We are. All right. New hands. New hands all around. Does this allow our opponent to interact with Gigantosaurus? Answer is no. Okay. Well, good news is we have naturalizes. Can go down the cartouches because our opponent doesn't really have many creatures. And, I mean, I think that's it. Maybe there's an argument to Prowling Sepperpard, but I don't know how many counters this deck can actually play. Maybe we go down Ronas for Sepperpard. Like, if our opponent doesn't have creatures, Sepperpard for Bristling Hydra. Maybe we just go all the Sepperpards? Yeah, let's try it like that. More three drops, more aggro, blow up artifacts. Well, we can uh, start casting Sepperpards on turn two. Hopefully draw something big to go with it island for our opponent and pass it who naturalize is not bad land where elves go man land where elves is so good opponent passes well forest supper pard go seems like some sweet sideboard tech opponent passing well forest go attacking supper pard number two go all right opponent's got a void well our fast clock combined with this naturalize might mean a pretty easy win for boggle horse green padim no artifacts yet, though. Ooh. Well, play a forest. Play key to the city. Discard a forest. Go attacking. And now we actually get to draw cards off Padim, right? Oh, no. I see. I see, I see. Opponent. Passing. Well, let's draw an extra card. Key to the city has been great in this deck. Discard a land. Go attacking. Opponent commits a sapper pard. Drops to one. Well, play the forest. Play Druid of the Cowl. Pass the turn. And Storm is not doing much of anything this game. And opponent scoops it up. And this deck seems pretty good. Uh, the clock is fast. The deck is strong. And we are just crushing people. All right. Budget magic time. Playing some Boggle Horse Green. And this hand looks pretty good. We'll keep it. I mean, there's some risks that our Druid gets killed. But we have our boggle horse into blanchwood armor we would like to just draw lands lands would be sweet i guess key to the city can potentially help us get there concealed courtyard Ooh, johnny's pride mate oh, this should be interesting land please oh so many four drops drew it to the cow go i'm a little nervous little nervous we are a 24 land deck which feels almost high but if we don't draw a land and this druid dies, we're suddenly in pretty sketchy shape. Opponent goes attacking. Well, let's just take it. I don't know what random instant speed life gain they could have, but that would be a blowout. Uh, resplendent angel. Opponent passes. All right, there's a land. So play Vinemare. Pass the turn. We kind of want one more land. If we get one more land and this druid lives, we can... Gets in, gets in... I'm still afraid to block. Yeah, let's take it. Are they really playing instant? All right, Veraska's Contempt. Pumps a Johnny's Pride, mate. Ugh. Gains some life. Down to 12. We do draw a land, but... Well, let's get in with Vine Mare. Hit our opponent. Play another Vine Mare. Pass the turn. Oh, please no Lyras. Please no Lyras. All right, another Resplendent Angel. Opponent gets in with Resplendent Angel. Yep. Down to nine. Oh, we might be dead next turn. We draw a forest. All right, one, two, three. Blanchwood Armor Vi Vine Mare. Play key to the city. Discard Bristling Hydra. Get in with Vine Mare. Hit our opponent. Down to seven. Pass the turn. This is going to be super close. If our opponent has a land, they can pump, gain five, and make an angel. We don't die, though. We go to one. And I think we'd need to draw another Branchwood armor. All right, Moment of Craving. Draw, uh, grows a Johnny's Pride Mate. Sure. Does our opponent have the land? Ixalan's Binding. That probably kills us as well. All right, takes a key to the city. Opponent gets in with an angel. So I think we have to draw a cartouche. Cartouche wins us the game. Actually, does it? Maybe. Down to six. Oh, no. 
Uh, Ixlot's biting our key to the city is going to beat us. Well, go attacking. Oh, if it was a cast out, we would have won. Opponent blocks. And we scoop it up. Wow. Ixlot's binding. Well, there is good news. Good news is we get to bring in fight spells. Go down... Maybe like a Carnage Tyrant, a couple of Bristling Hydras, and maybe we go three Prey Upons. Let's try it like that. All right. We're on the play. Uh, all right. Not as fast as we'd like, but we'll see. Forest go. Hopefully we draw some Mana Dorks or early game creatures. Planes for our opponent. Well, Forest, key to the city. Pass the turn. Isolated Chapel. And there's a pride mate. Ugh. All right, let's discard Carnage Tyrant. We need to find some early game stuff. Draw an extra card. Oh, dear. Well, Forest Forest was not what we were hoping for. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, maybe this risky keep is going to come back to bite us. Another pride mate. Oh, if our opponent can gain life. Gets in for two. Well, discard a forest. Which we have plenty of. Draw an extra card. I'll play a forest. Pass the turn. So I guess next turn we can Gigantosaurus, but something like Faraska's Contempt just ruins our day. Shield Mare. Ugh, oh, grows the Pride Mates. And we might just be getting life gained. Oh man, maybe this life gain deck is actually decent. Shield Mare. All right. Opponent. Gets in. I mean, we slam this Gigantosaurus and hope. Play a forest. If our opponent has Veraska's Contempt, though, they just, they got us. But this is all we can really do. Aw, oh, come on. No bindings, no Veraska's Contempts. There's a binding. Gets rid of Gigantosaurus. So we take a million. Opponent gets in for a million, down to four. Oh, play Llanowar Elves. Ugh. I think all we can really do is... Blanchwood armor. Prey upon. Play the land past the turn. We are dead to another removal spell. That was an impressive start for the life gain deck. Double a Johnny's Pride Mate back by life gain. Resplendent Angel. Glory Bound Initiate. Uh, now we're dead to pretty much everything. Opponent attack. So we kill Pride Mate. Now I think we're going to have to discard Vine Mare and hope to draw like double fight spell. I think is our only realistic out because of this angel so drop to two discard vine mare so that's our chance double fight spell draw fight fight two fights please and that does not do it and we are dead to the angel well that seems like a tough matchup for boggle horse green flying life linkers Tricky to beat, tricky to beat. So what do we learn this week about Boggle Horse Green for Standard? And overall, the deck was pretty sweet. So in our video matches, not only did we do some crazy Gigantosaurus stuff, including turn three Gigantosaurus, turn four Gigantosaurus, but we ended up going four and one. However, this comes with a couple of asterisks. So we actually won one additional match, but I had some video troubles. It was against a Goblin Gift deck. So we beat that deck. We also also rematched red aggro and storm and lost though so overall the record was five and three four and one in video five and three overall and the deck felt really good i was amazed by how effective it is just to play mana dorks play big things attack with big things having hexproof creatures was key and i really think that key to the city is kind of the key to the deck and i feel like making gigantosaurus unblockable it's a pretty huge deal, and it's really, really powerful. So I'm pretty excited about this deck. I think it's actually a pretty good budget option. So if you like annoying opponents with Hexproof, and you like attacking, which is massive, really hard to deal with, unblockable thanks to Key to the City creatures, I think this is a pretty good option. The only downside to this deck, or the main downside, is there isn't a ton of upgrade potential. Uh, even the optimal build of the deck, maybe you get like a Planeswalker in the 
the sideboard or something, but there isn't a whole bunch to do to make this a non-budget deck. The upside is, I think this deck probably sticks around after rotation. We have Land and War Elves still. We have other Mana Dorks, even though Druid of the Cowl itself will rotate. Steel Leaf Champion, still around. Vine Mare, Gigantosaurus, Carnage Tyrant. So I feel like uh, Blanchwood Armor as well. So I feel like if you're looking for a post-rotation deck, obviously it won't be 100% exactly the same. You gotta replace a few cards. Cartouche becomes something. Ronas, Bristling Hydra. But those are fairly easy cards to replace. So I think that if you're looking for a deck that's really fun, really fast, really annoying, pretty competitive right now, and you can likely take advantage of most of these cards post-rotation, Bacal Horse Green seems like a pretty good budget option. So anyway, that's been our budget magic for this week. Bacal Horse Green for Standard. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here